Welcome to the teaching and preaching ministry of First Baptist Church. If you enjoy this video, would you please share it with a friend? Also, visit fbcgypsum.org for more online content. Well, good morning, church. So glad you could be with us this morning and thankful for uh, the opportunity to be back in, ch in, in church and be an opportunity to preach the Word of God this morning. Uh, I do want to say a few things uh, as we get started this morning. I know that many of us have heavy hearts this week, and uh, most certainly, um, and we'll speak to that here in a few moments to come, but I, I want you to know that uh, here as a church, we're here for you and we care for you, and uh, we, we, we love you very, very much. Um, I know that as we enter um, into the weeks to come, I know that many of you have been asking, when can we meet again? I do have good news. Uh, we're going to gather back in this building on May 31st. It will be a service that looks different than what we've been used to uh, in, in, in this sense. And I'll, I'll just kind of explain to you right now what it's going to look like on May 31st. First of all, uh, we will just have one service on Sunday. That will be our 10.30 service. We'll keep it at 10.30, our regular uh, morning worship service time. Uh, but the, it will be s somewhat limited. Um, we aren't going to limit numbers, but what we will limit is this. is uh, uh, We won't, will not have um, any of the children's classes. And so for that service, normally we would have the uh, faith builders class, but they won't be meeting together. Also, we will not have the nursery available. Now, when, as soon as I say that, I know that many of your families are saying, Without the nursery, I can't come. <laughs> well, listen, uh, well, let me stress to you that this this morning. Just, just bring those babies anyway, okay? Just do it. I know it, they're, they make noise and, and sometimes they don't sit still. But uh, I, I, we would rather have them here than not at all. Absolutely beyond the shadow of a doubt. So bring them anyway, okay? Uh, it'll be okay. We're going to be okay. We really will. As a matter of fact, uh, we just, we, the gathering together is going to be such a sweet time. I'm looking forward to that. So May 31st at 1030. We will be doing social distancing. Uh, uh, we're not requiring you to wear a mask. However, we are encouraging it if you'd like to. If you absolutely don't want to, that's fine as well. Come on out anyway, okay? We'll have the, we'll have the seating arranged and, and we'll keep folks kind of separated. We are going to ask you to not congregate in places like the hallway. Uh, if you want to visit, we're going to ask you to go outside, and, and, and it should be good weather. We're going to ask you to go outside and visit with folks out there as opposed to inside the building. That will just help us with the cleaning and making sure that we're, uh, well, they, they tell us that the, 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 the virus simply doesn't spread nearly as well when you're outdoors, and so we're going to try to keep the fellowshipping to that part of the service as well. So just one service on Sunday to begin with, okay? We'll ease our way in. I want to say this. I'm, I'm grateful, uh, first of all, to, to those officials in our county who have begun to open things up. Thank you for, who, for doing that. It's a big deal. Uh, I, I would still like for them to declare church as being essential, which they have not done as of this point. However, uh, this uh, allowing us to meet up to the number 50, and really they, they've given us some wiggle room to go, even go beyond that if necessary. Um, but that has allowed us here in, in this church, in our church anyway, to be able to gather together around the Word of God again. So we'll have one service at 1030 on May 31st. So after this Sunday, we'll have one more Sunday of online church. That'll be Memorial Day weekend. And then the following Sunday, the last Sunday of May, we're, gonna, we're looking forward to gathering back here in this place. And so I, I'm encouraged. I'm looking forward to it. I also want to say to you this, uh, be sure to give. And we've been talking every Sunday about the three ways you can give. You can give by mailing that in to P.O. Box 815, Gypsum, Colorado, 81637. Um, make sure you send it to that P.O. Box. If you mail it to the physical address of the church, uh, we won't receive it. It will get returned to you. So make sure you send it to that P.O. Box number that is checked uh, regularly. And uh, any offering that comes in there goes immediately into, uh, in, into the... Um, uh, it is immediately counted and put in the, in the bank. You can also give on the website uh, online, which is a very good way to do it, very easy, very fast, very simple, 
And uh, I think you'll enjoy giving that way. And so let's go to fbcgypsum.org slash give, and you can give there. Also, you can give via a text message, and that's by texting the word FBC Gypsum, FBC Gypsum, to the number 22525. And just follow the instructions there on your telephone, and you can give uh, using a bank card that way. Really simple, really easy. And so if you'd like to give in one of those ways, I would encourage you to do it. That's the best way to do it. But I am excited to be able to come back together and assemble in this place uh, here in a couple of weeks. And I, I know many of you are looking forward to that as well. And so, uh, you know, uh, if I'm just being a little bit honest with you, you know, preaching to this camera in an empty room has not been any fun. I'm looking forward to seeing faces out there again. And I know you are as well. So uh, as we enter into the next part of the service here, I do want to, uh, I know that many of us have heavy hearts and, and, and during, this, uh, um, during the last week. And um, um, I just want us to, I want you to know here in a few moments that we're going to address that from the Word of God. But I also want to say this, you know, um, the Lord knows. He knows what we need right now. And what we need to do is to continue to trust in the Lord during this season. And if you're not aware of what I'm talking about, um, just know that our church has experienced a, a pretty incredible loss in the last week. And again, the Lord knows he'll take care of us and we'll be fine. But I want to speak to those folks who are wondering what to do next. And here in a little bit, we'll speak to that. But first, I'd like for us to take a moment and, and, and enjoy some music, prepare our hearts for the message. Grab your Bibles and, and get those out and get them ready to, 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 uh, to look into the Scripture this morning. And let's take a look at what the Word of God has to say for us here in a few minutes about how we should take deal with... Uh, with the trial that our church is going through at the moment.
Well, good morning, church. I just wanted to come to you today and uh, bring the Word of God to you this morning. I know that many of us have heavy hearts today. And if you're watching this video this morning and uh, maybe you have uh, not been a part of our church or you have not, uh, or, or you're just watching from elsewhere. And uh, first of all, I want to say thank you. Uh, we're so grateful to have you here with us. As a church body, though, today we're hurting. And uh, we, we've lost someone very dear and very close to us. And most certainly, in, in our body here, in the body of Christ, in our local church, um, a, a, a big hole has been left. And um, I know the Lord knows. He'll take care of us. And I have no doubt about that, not one doubt whatsoever. A lot of people ask me, well, what do we do now? What do we, where do we move from here? And I'd like to answer some of those questions this morning just for a few minutes, if I may. So if those of you who aren't normally a part of our church body, um, I, I hope that this is, an, is, is helpful to you. But just know that really I, I'm speaking to those of us who would normally sit in these pews in this auditorium. And I want to be an encouragement to those without as well. But for a few moments this morning, I'd like to really speak to uh, the body of First Baptist Church. And, and if you'll allow me to do that, and, and if you'll um, uh, give me that liberty this morning, I, I know that I would appreciate that this morning, and uh, I know that our folks would as well. If you're there, grab your Bibles and open to the book of First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, and we'll begin reading with verse number 12. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse number 12. Uh, the Bible there says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and beginning with verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the one body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if there were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head unto the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. I want you to join me in prayer this morning. Lord, we thank you for giving us this body that we call the church, this ecclesia, the called out assembly, Lord. Lord, you've chosen us long before we ever chose you. But Lord, I thank you for, for your care. Lord, I, I know this beyond a shadow of a doubt. You will care for this church. And you will meet the needs, both spiritual, physical, emotional, of this church. But Lord, we ask you today, 
Lord, as that verse there says, that when one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. And Lord, if I may say it this way, right now our church is going through a season of suffering. Now, Lord, I know that the Bible makes it very clear, and, and, and David himself said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Lord, we know that your presence is always with us. Lord, we trust that. We know that. And Lord, we trust that you will care for us today. And Lord, may we learn this morning how we as the body, as there is, you know, as, as the scripture mentions, Lord, as one suffers, how do the rest of us fill in those gaps? Lord, teach us this morning. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning the message is, is pretty simple. And um, I, I have here uh, 10 thoughts, 10 points this morning that I want to share with you, church. And the truth of the matter is, I've had folks ask me, uh, folks have asked uh, others in the church how they can help, how they can be a blessing. I, I wrote down 10 thoughts, and I want to share those with you this morning, if I may. And here's 10 ways that you can be a blessing to this body and to this church, to this pastor and to those in this church who are hurting, uh, which for the most part is, is, is all of us. And I just want to say this, uh, this is not an all-inclusive list. Uh, the Holy Spirit could lead you in more ways than this. But if you're wondering, what are some ways? What are some ways that I can be a blessing to the body of Christ during this season? I wanted to share these with you. Um, I want you to know, that some of these, as a pastor, are, 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 you may not understand, but they are incredibly important. The first one may be the biggest one for me. It may. And if you're taking notes this morning, I'd encourage you to do that. Grab a notepad. There's ten of them. They're very simple. Number one this morning, the first way that we can be a blessing and a help to the body of Christ while it's hurting, uh, while it's going through a season of suffering, Number one is simply this, be here, be here, stay, in other words, stay put. Now we know, and, and certainly we've, if you're on the social media, we've been, we've been circulating this verse of scripture around, it's, 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 it's heavy on my mind, and I know it's heavy on yours as well. I'm, I'm grateful that it won't be long before we can begin to do this again, but the Bible says in Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Here in Hebrews, the apostle says, not forsaking, right? In other words, making sure that you stay in your place. Don't leave. Be here. Be here. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Pastor, I can't be in the auditorium with the church. No, we can't do that this week. Uh, Lord willing, on May 31st, we'll gather back in this building. I'm looking forward to that opportunity. And, uh, but I will say this. As a church, we don't need a building. We don't need that. But we do need to be here with each other. There are individuals in this church right now that need us to circle the wagons around them, don't they? And they need us to, to gather around them and, and, and defend them, protect them, and, 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 and care for them. Uh, in a lot of ways, in the way that a mother cares for a child, it was that tender, loving care. How do we do that? First of all, we do it by being here, by being in our place. I don't intend to take a lot of time this morning, but... I do want to share with you number two, the second way that we can be a blessing. The second way is simply this, be sweet, be sweet. The Bible says in Hebrews 10.24, the verse right before 10.25, you know, where it talks about not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. And in the previous verse it says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. 
I, I get it. The flesh is weak, and, and our initial desire when it comes to provoking is not to provoke to love. Sometimes our initial reaction, our initial desire is that we want to provoke to other things, provoke to anger, provoke to discouragement, provoke to bitterness. But friends, we can't do that right now. We must not do that in this season. We must be sweet. Oh, listen, we must, we, we, we must, as a body this morning, we must come together with a sweet, sweet spirit. David is described as the sweet psalmist of Israel. You know, even though he went through bitter times, he found the way to be sweet. And that's what we need to do. We need to be that flavor-enhancing sweetness during this season. Be sweet. Number three this morning, we need to be a steward. You know, if we took inventory, as the old song says, count your many blessings and name them one by one. It is so easy right now for us to think of all of the things that we have lost in the last week. And to think of all that is no longer with us. And if we dwell on that, my friends know this, we're not being good stewards. It's not good stewardship. We ought to count our blessings. You know, it's so easy for us in this season to, 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 to focus inwardly when we ought to be continuing to focus outward. You know, as a church, what I'm saying is simply this. Be a steward. Continue to give liberally, both to God as well as to our fellow man. Give liberally. Now, look, I, I know for, for our church, I'm preaching to the choir. Uh, we're a church of givers. But we ought not forget that everything we have comes from the Lord, right? It's like, uh, it's like Job said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It all belongs to him anyway, right? So let's be a steward. And let's make sure we take care to, to give the way that the Lord has asked us to give. Number four this morning. The fourth way that we can, um, that, that we can help the body of Christ is be separate. <laughs> okay. Let me make sure I tell you what I mean by that, Okay. You say, well, pastor, you said be here. Now you said be separate. No, no, hang with me. Let, let me explain what I mean. What I mean by that is live a separated life from the world. Live in a way that is distinctly for God inside this world. Let's make sure that when we go to work, when we go to the grocery store, when we're with our loved ones, with our family, that there is no doubt whom, we, whom the person is that we serve. Why? Because we're living like we serve Jesus Christ. We live, live a life that's separate from the world. You know, it's so easy during seasons like this one to fall back on old things, on worldly things, on the way we used to live. But we must not do that right now. We must continue to live a life that's separated to Jesus Christ. We must continue to live a life that that exudes a difference, the, uh, that, that, that shows the faith, the love, and the hope that's in our hearts. We must continue to spread that during this time. Oh, even though our hearts hurt, we must continue to be separated for the Lord. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6, 17, Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Let's make sure that in this season, we're living a separated life for the Lord. Number five, number five, be in the book. Of course, I mean the Word of God, the Scripture, right? Be in the Scripture. Read it. Study it. Hear the preaching of it. Make this book the ultimate authority in your life. I cannot stress that enough today. Use the Word of God. For the Word of God is quick 
and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the hearts. You see, if we set this book on the shelf, we're doing the body of Christ a disservice. There may be some of us who in this season actually need to go to the shelf, pull the old Bible, wipe the dust off of it, right? And open it up and begin to read and read the Word of God. We need the Bible during this season. Number six, so number one, be here. Number two, be sweet. Number three, be a steward. Four, be separate. Five, be in the book. Number six, be sold out for Jesus Christ. Be sold out. Be fully committed to the things of the Lord. Listen, commit to your marriage, to your family, and most of all right now in this season, please commit to your church family. We need you so much. Oh, we need you desperately right now. Be sold out. Luke 9.62 says this, And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Don't look back now. Continue to press forward for the cause of Jesus Christ. That is what we must do today as a church, is to be sold out for Jesus. Listen. The world has so many things it offers to us. You know, what's interesting about a lot of those other things, those other idols that we've had in our lives, the Lord's taken most of those away. But you know what? We can still be sold out for Jesus Christ, and we ought to be. Let's sell out for him. Number seven, be soul winning. Be soul winning. Look, There are still people in our world who are lost and need Jesus Christ. Be a soul winner this week. Be soul winning. Go to others with the message of salvation. Luke 19.10 says this, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Oh, listen, that's the whole purpose of Jesus Christ's ministry was to seek those who needed salvation and to share with them the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Number eight, I want you to be spiritual. Be spiritual this morning. Live in a way that is holy, godly, pure, and clean. Uh, What I mean by that, let me show you. 2 Timothy 2.21. 2 Timothy 2.21 says this. If a man therefore purge himself of these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Be spiritual. You know, it's so easy to live a carnal life. A carnal life, that meaning a life that is of the flesh, of the old way of doing things, right? Let's don't live our life that way. We don't live in the power of this flesh We live instead in the power of Jesus Christ, right? That's how we ought to live. That's the way our life ought to be. For me to live is Christ, right? In other words, everything I do is for Jesus Christ. And that's the way we should continue to operate and continue to live. Living a spiritual life. Number nine, be sensitive. Be sensitive. You know, we need to be responsive to the needs of others especially those in our church. By the way, I I, I want to say this about our church. Thank you so much. This is one of those that I'm really preaching to the choir this morning. You've done that. You've been sensitive. But know this, one of the things about sensitivity is it tends to fade over time. But what we need to do is to continue and to ramp it up as, as we move further and further along. It says there in Galatians 6, verse 10, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially them who are of the household of faith. Oh, that we could be sensitive to the needs of those around us in our church during this time. Number 10, and the last one this morning, let's be solid. Be solid. You know, 
during this season that we're in right now, it, we, you might feel pretty weak. But I remind you, my friends, that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. Oh, listen, you may feel flimsy this morning, but you can stand solid on Jesus Christ. We can be solid by standing on Jesus Christ. If we try to get through this season on our own, we'll fail. We'll become bitter, angry at God. But if we choose instead to rely on Jesus Christ, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. That's what we need to do this morning. Oh, that we can get to the end of our life. As the Apostle Paul did in 2 Timothy 4 and verse number 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Church, as we enter into the, the, this uh, and, and continue to walk through this difficult season as a church family, I want you to know we walk through it together. You're not alone this morning. You're not walking through this alone. You have us. We're here with you. I get it. Right now, for the next few days or so, we aren't able to meet together the way we would like to. But you have friends here. Look, if you're struggling spiritually or emotionally, physically, whatever difficulty you're going through right now, grab that telephone and call. Call somebody in this church. Call me Call someone else. I, listen, we're here. That, that word edifying, by the way, it means to build up. I always get the picture of, of Moses as he was looking down across the valley. Joshua was fighting a, a, the battle down in the valley. And as long as Moses would hold up the rod, right, as long as he did that, the armies of Joshua prevailed. But when, when his rod, hands got tired and he began to drop the rod, then the, the enemy prevailed. And two men, Aaron, the brother of Moses, and, and another man named Hur, they, they, they pulled up some rocks. And they, they, first of all, they set Moses down so he could have a seat. And so they have Moses there. He's sitting now on the rock, holding up the rod. And then one of those men, one on each side, grabbed his arms and, and propped up his arms, the arms of Moses. And as long as Moses held that rod in the air, the armies of God prevailed. You know, that's what we need to do. See, you might be in need of having your arms propped up just a little bit. And that's why the church is here. We're here to do that for you. Listen, if you need help this morning, just reach out to anybody here in the church, myself included. There's no time of the day when you can't reach out to me. If you don't know how to get a hold of me, uh, just go to the church website. There's a phone number on there. It's just use it. Call it. I'll answer it. Uh, and, and I'll get back. If, if, if I can't get to the phone right away, I will, I will call you back, leave a message. Listen, I, listen, what we need to do right now is we need to lift up the arms of one another during this season. The Lord will take care of us. He will. I have no doubt about that. But he's also given us the responsibility and the, the joy, the privilege as a church, as the body of Christ, to help one another in these ways. So here's 10 ways that we can be a blessing one to another this week. And I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, I hope you were able to glean something from this. I, this message is very different than perhaps I normally would preach. And uh, I just feel like as a church, we need to, to, to consider these things today. And I want to make sure that, I was, that I'm an, an encouragement to you as well. And let you know that you're loved, you're cared for, and we're here for you. All you need to do is reach out be there in a moment's notice. That being said, church, I love you, and we'll see you right here on this video format next Sunday, Lord willing, on May 31st. We'll be able to gather back here in this building. And it looks like it's shaping up, but that's going to work out quite nicely for us. So we'll look forward to that opportunity. With love, I'll see you next Sunday.